we will not be afraid. Because if God be for us, then what? Who can be against us? So every time you step out in the morning, please, you need God. You need God. Don't play with him. Don't joke with him. Anything that has to do with his covenant, don't joke with him. Look at his word. What is he asking you to do? Please don't play with it. I know that there are people with smart ideas, but God has wisdom. I have never seen a smart idea deliver any man. It is the wisdom of God that sets men free. And we need to be close to him. We need to hold him. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I feel there's someone under the sound of my voice or online that need to take seriously their relationship with God. And I pray that the Lord will keep you safe. In Jesus' name. All right. Isaiah 6, that's where I'm going this morning from verse 1 to 4. Isaiah 6 from verse 1 to 4. And I'm going to read. Thank you guys. Awesome. And I'll read from verse 1 to 4. Isaiah 6. Then Philippians 3 from verse, I'll read verse 10 alone. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, a high, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, I love the song they sang this morning, Holy, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Philippians 3 verse 10. Philippians 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable, conformable unto his death. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for the entrance of your word that gives light. I ask, O oh God, as we go into this, to this sermon, that you will speak a word that is going to fit into the situations of men in such a way that it will cause a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, open our understanding to be able to comprehend the entirety of your counsel today. And let us leave this place knowing fully well that we have been equipped for whatever may come our way in the week. We give you praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, we hold you bound. You have no portion here in Jesus' name. Unless a believer will believe, shall they be God, amen. amen. Say with me, the key to divine encounters Say it again. The key to divine encounters. All right. As believers, one of the very important thing that we all must always enjoy or must always try as much as possible to enjoy is divine encounter. Divine encounter simply refers to a meeting between the divine and the human. In other words, it is when God unveils or when God reveals a part of his gloriousness to us. Whenever God does this, he gives us an encounter. And without divine encounters, quite a number of things will be missing in our lives. Without divine encounters as believers, our Christianity will just be religious. Without divine encounters, we cannot in any way experience God at the level at which or at the point at which we should, to which we should enjoy him to. Divine encounters are important. Divine encounters are needed. Divine encounters are significant to our work with God. When we define divine encounter, we can also say it is a moment in which God reveals a dimension of his glory to a person. A moment in which God reveals a dimension of his glory to a person. If you look at Matthew chapter 17, you will see there 
the Bible said that Jesus in verse 1 took three guys, three disciples rather, one by the name Peter, another one by the name John, another one by the name James, and he went to a mountain top. And in that place, he was transformed before them. Now, the reason for that transformation is a divine encounter. You realize that later in the book of 2 Peter, Peter referred to it. That encounter made an indelible mark upon the lives of Peter and upon the lives of James and John. God wants you and I to enjoy divine encounters. I'll give you some few reasons why I believe God wants us to enjoy it so that you can understand it. The first thing about divine encounter is this. Divine encounters produces joy in our lives. When you, when you experience a dimension of God's gloriousness, if God opens to you a part of him that you have never known before, what it always comes at the end of it is gladness. In other words, it is joy. Without you experiencing divine encounter as a child of God, there is a level and a depth and a dimension of joy that you can never have. Your joy will always be based on happenings. Your joy will be based on when you have money. When the time to pay salary is coming near, you are very joyful. When the salary enters your account, you are very happy. But when bills begin to go out, you are very sad. Because why? All you are basing your joy on is that those uh, 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 papers or what we call money. But when you have divine encounters, in other words, God has revealed himself to you or dimension of his majesty or dimension of his glory, you will realize at the end of the day that whether the money comes in or not, what you have seen, what you have encountered will sustain your joy. This is the reason why many Christians today lack joy. Because we don't have divine encounters with God. When we have it, it produces joy. Let me read a scripture to us in Matthew 28. There were these women that went to the tomb where Jesus resurrected from. And they had a divine encounter with angels. When you see angels as a divine encounter, if an angel walked into this place right now, and it, it says, oh, I am an angel, and we all looked, and he's so tall, and he's so glorious, you will realize that by the time we are leaving this place, we will never be the same again. Because an encounter produces joy. So this woman went in Matthew 28, to the tomb, and they had a divine encounter. None of them has ever seen an angel before. Even though they have seen Christ, they ministered to Christ when he was here on the face of the earth, but none of them has ever encountered an angel before. So they saw a gloriousness, because when you see angels, you see gloriousness around them. Bible says when an angel came into the, into the prison where Peter was, the scripture said light shone around. There is a gloriousness that comes with the presence of these angels because these angels stand in the presence of the Most High God. And by the virtue of standing in the presence of God, the glory of God has, has, has shone on them, has rubbed off on them. And therefore, wherever they go, they carry that glory. So these women had this encounter, Matthew 28. And let's look at what happened to them. In verse 8 of Matthew 28, the Bible says, And they departed, after they have had an encounter with these angels. He said, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. They, de they departed with fear and great joy. Now, you could see, the Bible did not call it just ordinary joy, but great joy. May God give you an encounter that will give you great joy. Because today, our joy seems to be under attack. When you see Christian, we look so morose. We look so overgassed and flabbergasted. <laughs> we look so defeated. By the time, the only time we show joy at times, is only when we are talking to our friends. When we are alone, we are sad. We are, we are downcasted. But that's about to change. Because I believe as I pray for you today, God will give you from time to time encounters that will sustain your joy. Amen. If you believe that, shall they be God, amen. amen. In the book of John chapter 20, quickly again, you will see here another set of people that encountered, that had a divine encounter with God. In John 20, verse 19 to 20, he said, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, to, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst. Can you imagine? The doors were shut, but Jesus came in, in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. I said like Christ said, Peace be unto you. 
He said, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his what? And, and, and his sight. And the Bible says, look at this. Then, look at that. Where did this, where the disciples, what? Glad when they saw the Lord. Because seeing Jesus resurrected is an encounter. Because Jesus was crucified in the corruptible, but he resurrected in the incorruptible. In other words, the glory with which he resurrected with is far beyond the glory that he had before he died. So when they saw him, it was a divine encounter. And they were what? They were glad. So divine encounters bat gladness. He bats joy, great joy, unspeakable joy, indescribable joy, joy without limits, joy without boundaries, joy without any kind of human influence. And I pray that the Lord will give you such encounters so that your joy will not be based on what is and what is not. So that your joy will not be based on who is and who is not. So that your joy will not be based on what you have and what you don't have. So that your joy will not be based on who you have and who you don't have. So that your joy will not be based on where you are and where you are not. So that your joy will not be based on what is happening to the world and what is not happening to the world. Because divine encounter guarantees that you have joy. First John, quickly. First John chapter 1. And I read from verse 1 to verse 4. I want to read this. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen. That's divine encounter. With our eyes, you see that? Which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father was manifested unto us. That's a divine encounter. When something is manifested, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things, now listen to this, write we unto you that your joy may be full. Anyone whose joy is not full, I pray, may God give you an encounter to introduce fullness of joy to your life. There is a way you see something that is beyond the physical. There is a way God will show you something in the future. That will produce so much joy in you that no matter what is happening right now, the joy that you have, you are drawing it from that encounter. You have in oh Shandala Bayatakaya. You are drawing it from where? From the encounter you have had with him. When you have an encounter with God, your joy will be full. You will be full. It will not be based on anything else. So that's the first reason why we need divine encounter. Number two, quickly, because of my time. We need divine encounter because it impacts our faith in God. Positively. Divine encounter impacts our faith in God. Now, by the grace of God, next week we are having faith conference. Don't miss it. Saturday, 6 p.m. on Zoom. And then Sunday, make sure you're in service for the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we want to take your faith to the next level. A lot of people enjoy having faith when faith is working. But when sin as see faith so, so to say, it's not producing their desired result. They don't know what to do. The Bible said, pick up the shield of faith. Above all, take on the shield of faith. The theme is the shield of faith. Don't miss it. I believe strongly in my heart that encounters strengthens a man's faith. Because what you hear is good. But when you now see it, it's a different ball game. When you now have an encounter with God, we are God. He's not able to now speak to you as a person. You will realize that the way you will begin to operate and the level at which you will be operating, even all the people around you will not be able to understand. Because why? You have seen things. Ah, Rabo Shakayada. I don't have time, but in Acts chapter 10, God gave, hear me, God gave Peter an encounter. In that encounter, he saw a sheet of animals descending from heaven unclean animals. And then a voice came and said, rise Peter and eat. And Peter said, I cannot eat anything that is not cleansed. And God told him, whatever I have cleansed, call thou not unclean. That was three times it was done, he refused to eat. Then as, it, as the encounter left him, a message was sent far away from Cornelius. A Gentile. You will never see a Jewish man go to a Gentile house. If a Jewish man enters a Gentile house, he has become unclean. But God gave Peter an encounter. By the time they delivered the message, he could not say no. What tradition was against, inspiration discover. 
You have to look when you have an encounter from God, you will no longer walk by tradition, you'll be walking by inspiration because you'll be walking by vision. And when you walk by vision, you are walking by instruction. When you walk by instruction, you are walking by wisdom. When you walk by wisdom, you will prevail. Oh, somebody said a bigger day, man. What keeps people's faith going? Peter left, went to that house, and the Bible said he preached to the entire household of Cornelius. And the scripture said, while he was speaking. Hmm. <laughs> Someone said, while he was speaking. Can you shout? I want people online to hear you shout. He said, while he was speaking. The Bible said, while he was speaking, the Holy Ghost fell. Now, Peter does not have a tank of the Holy Ghost where you can open the tap and release it. It was God that released it. God have a way of validating your actions that are based on divine encounters. And the scripture said that when he came back to the Jews, they took him up. They challenged him. But he said, you were not there on the top of the house when he came to me. And he showed me this sheet. And when I had that understanding, I was why I went to where I went. And you know what to shock you guys? The same way you receive the Holy Ghost, they also receive the Holy Ghost. I pray for you today that the Lord God will strengthen your faith by giving you divine encounters from this day forward in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, give somebody a high five. Say, I receive it. Divine encounters, they strengthen our faith. The moment you receive them, you realize that your faith is strengthened. Abraham is called the father of faith. And I sat down to look at his life. How come he had so much faith that you believe what God said to you at 70? God said to you, I will make you father of many nations. And by the time you are 90, you are still saying he will make you father of many nations. If I had 90, you change your name to fit to what God said. Anybody will look at you that 20 years of waiting, waiting shows that God did not speak to you. That 20 years is too much for God to do what he wants to do. But we are serving a sovereign God. He makes all things beautiful in his time. He is the one that chooses the time. The time you came to this world was not your decision. It was God's decision. You came at the right time to the right family. He said the solitary in families. And do you know one thing that is beautiful about this time? When the time comes, he will set you on high. When your time comes, what you could not achieve in 20 years, you will achieve it in 20 days. When your time come and give somebody a high five. Say, my time is here. <laughs> Divine encounters. So I began to look at Abraham. Somebody shout Abraham. I began to look at Abraham. Why is he so strong in faith? And I realized, I will not have time to show you everything, but I'll show you probably two or three. I realized he was a man of encounters. If you look at Abraham, Abraham never went months without an encounter with God. Let me show you some few examples. Genesis 12, verse 7. Genesis 12, verse 7. He says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. The appearance of God to him was an encounter. If God appears to you and said, I will give you a house in this land. Now, you know that when you say that before people, you are mad. Because they will tell you, uh, well, he will, show, he will shine your eye. He will show you like pepper. But if God was the one who appeared, if God gave you an encounter, God told Jesus, you will die. But on the third day, you will rise. It was by encounter that Jesus had that. So when he came here, he said, I lay down my life. And then I will pick it up again on the third day. And the scripture said, when he was dying, he died like a pauper. When he was dying, he died like a non-entity. When he was dying, he died like a nuisance. But the Bible tells me, the first day went, nothing happened. The second day went, nothing happened. But on that third day, Psalm 102 verse 13. Oh, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her has come. Somebody said, the time to favor me has come. Now, I don't know whether you believe it or not, but you need a divine encounter for that. Because right now, you are experiencing disfavor. Right now, you are experiencing limits. Right now, you are experiencing lack. But if God gives you an encounter, in the midst of the lack, you'll be dancing. Because you know, if he has said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will bring it to pass. They said, why are you dancing? He said, the Lord appeared to me. The Lord showed up. Somebody said, he will show up. Somebody said, he will show up. Somebody said, he will show up. That's what you need for your faith, an encounter. I know you believe the word, but the word needs to be made flesh. 
I know you believe what God has said, but what God has said needs to be made manifest. You need to see it with your spiritual eyes and see it with your physical eyes. You need to be able to put yourself in a position where you can gaze into what the Lord has said. If you have not seen it, it is difficult to sustain the faith. You have to have seen it. You have to have seen yourself as a student graduating. You must have an encounter with that. So that no matter what any lecturer is saying, say, I have seen the end from the beginning. The reason why God declares the end from the beginning, because he himself is the end. Oh, you missed that. God himself is what? The hand. Look, your hand is guaranteed. Are you, are you with me, somebody here? You have to draw from encounters. When I look at CCLC, I look at the encounter that God gave us at the beginning of this ministry. And every time anything tries to shake my faith, I draw strength from that encounter. Because God cannot lie. If God will not do it, he will not show it. If God will not do it, he will not even put it in your heart. Now, when I remember those encounters, I have a, I have a book. I call it Book of Visions. As the Lord was showing me where he was taking this ministry, I was writing them down. One after the other. When the Lord showed me that thing, we were no more than nine or ten people. When the Lord showed me that thing, we didn't have enough money to even pay for an auditorium. But I kept writing it down. Every time now, I go back to that book. I open them. I look at the book. When people despise me, I look at the book. When they despise your vision, look at your encounters. Are you with me, somebody here? Because the Lord appeared to Abraham. I will give your seed this land. But the land is in the hand of Lord, the Amorite. So how can you, Abraham, do you have an army? I don't. Do you have soldiers? I don't. Do you have a, a whole battalion? I don't. So how can you say you will take the land that belongs to these people that the Lord will give me? God has a way of driving them out before you get there. So Abraham was a man of encounters. That's why his faith was strong. So I'm praying for you today. May God Almighty give you encounters concerning what you are believing him for so that your faith will remain strong will be sustained continually in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that you will not go down in faith. You will rise up in faith. Heaven will give you encounters. I said, heaven will give you encounters. I said, God will give you encounters in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah if you believe very loud. So this is the reason why Abraham was strong in faith. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith. If you read the book of Romans, he was strong in faith. Why? Because he had an encounter. God appeared to him from time to time. Again, let's go to Genesis 17 verse 1. I'm going to show you. He had encounters. That's why at the age of 90, he can still say, I believe. He never gave back to that child until he was 90 and 9. 90 and 9. And he was 70 when he left his father's house. 90 and 9. It's an encounter that makes you survive the pressure of time. Because the devil will tell you, look at your mates. The devil will tell you, look at others. No, don't look at others. Look at your encounters. Look at your encounters. Look at what God recently had to ask one of my, uh, 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 somebody I know. I said, remind me again what you said you saw. Look at the encounters. Oh, he said, oh, this is what I saw. That's what I saw. I said, hmm, thank you very much. Just remind me again. In case I want to forget. Because encounters, hear me, as long as they're authentic, they will come to pass. Genesis 17 verse 1, look at this. And when Abraham was 90 years old and what? And nine. What did God do then? The Lord did what? Appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. What? What? At the age of 99? What's happening, Lord? I'm almost 100. You are still telling me promises. But it was an encounter. The Lord appeared. How many people does God appear to? To believe is what is enough. But when he appears, it's a different ball game. It's a different what? Ball game. He strengthens your faith. In John 20, the Bible said there was a young man by the name Thomas that was not there the first time that Jesus appeared after resurrection to the disciples. So in John 21, the Bible said God, Jesus, gave him another opportunity. And Jesus appeared. Now, Thomas like we know him in the church community, we call him Doubting Thomas. That's why some people are afraid to give their children the name Thomas. <laughs> Doubting Thomas. But the scripture says, 
He had been with Christ for three and a half years. He has had the world, but that's not working for him. He saw Jesus on the cross dead. He saw him buried. He saw the tomb closed. He saw soldiers there. He's not hearing gossip. They said, they said, that they said that some people said that some women were there and they can't find the body. So when he came to the disciples, they said, we saw the Lord. They said, keep quiet. So you people are so stupid. So I went to university. I have a degree in psychology. Master's in physiology. Oh, sorry, that does not even work together. But just take it as it is. <laughs> Amen. If you are psychology and physiology, we have to pray for you. Because those are two different hands. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I, you, there's no way. But God knew the only thing that can impart faith into Thomas. The same Thomas that told Jesus, when Jesus said, our friend Lazarus is asleep. He said, let's leave him alone. He said, why do we want to disturb him? Let the man sleep. <laughs> Amen. So Jesus had to say, I am sleeping. That same Thomas. The Bible said they were seated. Jesus came back because of him. Ah, Christ will come back because of you. He cannot afford to see you walk in doubt. The Bible said Jesus came back and then saw him. And Thomas saw him. That is a divine encounter. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, put your hand into my palms. And see whether it is real. Is this a spirit? And the Bible says that. Thomas looked at him and made a statement that changed his life forever. And he said, my Lord and my God. Can, we, can you imagine? In one day, he accepted that Jesus is not only Lord, Jesus is God. Because all of his doubts just came down. All the walls of doubt. Just today, I pray, God will give you an encounter that will cause the walls of your life to come down. The walls of doubts to come down. The walls of unbelief to come down. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Abraham. God kept giving him. This was why he was strong in faith. Ministers, this was why he was strong in faith. This is the reason why he could say, I am Abraham, father of many nations, when he had no child. He was receiving encounter after encounters after encounters. If you are sitting with the world, it's good. But can I say this to you? One thing about the world is this. You need to have an encounter with the world. Oh, Shanda Yabaha. The world needs to open up to you. I was studying recently. And I, I was going through, this scripture was uh, 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 brought up in my spirit. The entrance of your world gives light. Do you know that God needs light to destroy darkness? That's why the first thing he created was what? Light. When light is in a place, darkness disappears. John 1 verse 4. He said, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shines in darkness. And what did the darkness do? They could not comprehend it. I don't know whether you are hearing me online, but hear me very well. You need to understand this scripture. The word needs to enter. It's not the hearing of the word. It is the entrance of the word. It's not the listening to the word. You can sit down here and listen to me. But if the word cannot penetrate into your spirit, light cannot shine on your path. It is when we don't allow the word to enter. Whenever the word is spoken, you have a reason. Uh -huh. When they say believe it, mm -hmm, they've come. Oh. When they say it will happen tomorrow, mm, they have come. Now, by saying those things, they are not entering. You know why you are saying them? You are looking at your circumstances and say, I believe God for so many years, it has not happened. 99 years birthday, God is still promising. What he promised at 70, he takes an encounter to say, Yes, Lord. Thomas said, Yes, Lord. Thomas said, Hear me, my Lord and my God. He said, hear me, my Lord and my what? And my God. An encounter is important. Genesis 18, quickly I'll give you one more about Abraham. I am raising you today to the level of encounters. To live the level of counting. To the level of encounters. To live the level of what? Counting. To the level of what? Encounters. So that when you are speaking to someone, you will say to them, I stood on the mountaintop. I waited to hear what you will say. That I may see what you will say unto me. And he said unto me, write down the vision. Make it plain. That he may run that readeth it. He said, let that be the level at which you operate. 
Not only do you believe the written word, but you have seen the written word. The life has been made manifest. That life we are witness to it. And now we are writing unto you that you may have great joy. I pray in the name of Jesus. Your moment of encounter starts today. You can tell me I'm believing a lie. But when I see it, you can't convince me I'm believing a lie. I have seen, like, like, like Martin Luther King said, I have been to the mountaintop. I have seen the other side. That will come a time in the history of America when an African-American man, a black man, will fit into a white house and it will be there. And on the day Barack Obama won that election and he came out to say, yes, we can. You could see tears on the faces of men because they can remember that somebody once saw it. Whatever God showed you, Whatever God has shown you, don't let anything convince you that it shall not come to pass. Encounter is what you need. Believe those encounters. Believe the word of God and it shall come to pass. If you believe, say, I receive it. Encounters. Look at Genesis 18 verse 1. We're talking about Abraham. We're still on Abraham. We have not gone to the message yet, but I will break it down very soon. Genesis 18 verse 1. And the Lord appeared. Look at that. Unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. I don't know how many people are suffering or experiencing heat. The heat of the day, the pressure of the day. Are you hearing me? It's as if you are in a pressure cooker, it's as if they are cooking you. There's no respite for you at all. You are going from one problem to another problem. Nothing seems to be working at all. You pray, no answer. In the heat of the day, you know what God did? God appeared. Then the Bible says in verse 2, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, bowed himself toward the ground, verse 3, quickly, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Go to verse 4, quickly. And the Bible said, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Verse 5, go there quickly. And I will fetch a muzzle of bread and comfort ye your heart. After that, ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. Verse 6, quickly. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal and knead it and make cakes upon the earth. Quickly. And Abraham ran into the earth and fetched a calf tender and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it. Verse 8. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and stood by them under the, free, under the tree and they did eat. God was eating. <laughs> Verse 9. And they said unto him, where is Sarah? Do you know when you give God honor, he asks you for your problem. When Elisha ate in the house of the Shunammite woman, he looked at his servant. He said, what shall we do for this woman? That's why I said to people, take care of God. Take care of the things of God. He said, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. Verse 10, quickly go there. And he said, I will certainly. Now, this is, this is unimaginable. This is no longer a voice from the cloud. This is God in person. Seated. Clothed in the shape and the bodily form of a human being. And said, I wish, someone said certainly. certainly. When God uses the term certainly, even when men use it, you believe. When God uses it, that is a done deal for you. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. He gave him a time for what he has been believing God for. Remember in Genesis 17, it was 19 and 9. This is not Genesis 18. So it's 19 and 9. He said, I will return, and thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind him. What did she do? Verse 11. And now, the Bible says, Abraham and Sarah were old. Now, before she laughed, I want to tell you why she laughed. Because it's, it's easy for you to, 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 to crucify Sarah. Uh, yeah, it's easy. But look at your own situation. Look at how you are laughing. Look at, look at when you hear the word and how you laughed. He said, now Abraham and Sarah were what? Hold. Now, the Bible did not stop there. He qualified it. 
He said, and well stricken in age. And it ceased <laughs> to be with Sarah after the manner of women. It has ceased. Women, I will not go for that. You know what that means. Now, based on that verse 11, now you understand. Therefore, someone said, therefore. therefore. What did she do? Say it very loud. One, two, go. Therefore. That's even one thing. She didn't laugh out. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a dangerous laughter. When you're laughing inside. Uh, hey, mother. <laughs> believe, believe, believe. Hey, mother. Keep saying it. It will shine your eye. <laughs> you're in the UK. You see me, bo. <laughs> That, that laughter inside, God heard. Do you know God can hear what's going on within? Yes. Remember I've said it here before? When Robert Ledon went to heaven as a little child, and Jesus told him that the thoughts of the hearts of men are louder in heaven than the voice of their mouth, than their voices. So she laughed within herself, saying, after I am wax old. God did not speak before she was old. No, before she was old, no, she was very, 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 very beautiful. She was so beautiful that Abraham got to a place some time ago in Egypt and she had to tell her to lie. Tell them that you're my sister. Because there's no fear of God in this place. They will kill me for your life. Because she was too beautiful. That's why women, make yourself beautiful. Say that your mother is beautiful. He said, after I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. Verse 13. And the Lord said. What did the Lord say? To Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh? Now you now see why Sarah was denying it. Because she didn't laugh out. I mean, if she had said, <laughs> they would have recorded it on Samsung 156 or iPhone 5015 and they would have played it again. But that didn't happen. She laughed inside. Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I of a shorty bear a child which I'm old? God told her what she said. Look at verse 15. Go there. Sorry, verse 14. Is anything too Hard for the Lord. Let me ask your neighbor that question. No. Say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. God now said, at the time appointed. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Tap your neighbor. Say, neighbor, 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 neighbor. No. Say, at the time appointed, God will return unto thee. According to the time of life. Sarah shall have a son. It was that encounter that they had that strengthened the faith of Abraham. So, encounter strengthens what? Our faith. Amen. Then quickly, let me give you one more. Then I will go to uh, uh, why, uh, 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 how you can have it. Quickly, I'll give you one more reason why, I mean, why you need an encounter. We need divine encounters because they reveal divine secrets. 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 God is a God of secrets. You cannot successfully work with God except you have insight into secrets. Divine secrets are not for everyone. That is why we all don't know as we ought to know. The people who are working stronger, the people who pick themselves up every day, the people who keep going on based on what God has said, are doing it because God has given them encounters that have shown them secrets. When you look at scriptures, you look at a man by the name Daniel. Daniel was a man of encounters. And you will see, there is no secret in the kingdom of Babylon that Daniel did not know about. In Daniel chapter 2, time will not permit me, but in Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And Nebuchadnezzar did not disclose that dream to anybody. Are you with me? And as a result, he now asks that the people around him should tell him the dream. Can you imagine you having a dream and asking someone to tell you the dream? How is that possible? Asking someone to reveal to you what you saw in your dream. But the Bible said, Daniel went to pray. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, I will kill all of you. If you don't tell me my dream. And the scripture said, in Daniel 2 verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. You need the night vision. To be able to deal with the day situation, you need a what? A night vision. 
The Bible says, and it was revealed in the night. That's an encounter. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. What am I trying to say here? Listen very carefully to this. God Almighty reveals secrets through encounters. And when you have encounters with him, you will have access and insight into secrets of heaven. The things that mere mortals don't have access to. That's why I'm pushing this agenda today. Someone say encounter agenda. Shout it like you mean it, those of you online to say encounter agenda. So that when people challenge you while you go to church, you will tell them, I go to church because there I have seen in my spirit that God will strengthen me. God will uphold me. Fill me with wisdom to deal with what you can deal with during the week. That's why when you are weak in the week, I am strong in the week. Hallelujah. It's important that we understand the place of encounter. Where God wants us to be. Amen. How do I get it? The prerequisites to divine encounters. And I'll begin to close. Quickly, I've got to close. The prerequisite to divine encounter. If you want encounters, please be thirsty. Thirst. Spiritual thirst. It is not available to everybody. It's available to those who thirst. In our text, you will see clearly in Philippians 3 verse 10, where Paul said, he said, that I may know him. The power of his resurrection. When he said that I may know him, he's not asking for just what is written. He's asking for encounters. I want to have authentic meeting with God. But you have to thirst for it. Because God still reveals himself. God still show himself. People may tell you those are Bible days things. You will be shocked the people who are seeing God now. You will be shocked that someone yesterday night had an encounter with the Most High God. Where they were told secrets of the kingdom. Encounters is what we need. That's what makes your Christianity solid and authentic. He makes it strong and unmovable. Immovable. He makes it so powerful and then at the same time so profound. Encounter is what makes you look at someone who is using your circumstance to judge your future to tell them, shut up. You have not seen what I have seen. You have not seen what I have seen. I have been to the mountaintop. I have met with God. He had told me this is the way it will be. He had told me I will go through this path. And he had told me this is what the end will look like. So therefore, because you haven't seen it, that's why you are making your nerves. Someone say I'm thirsty. Matthew 5 verse 6, blessed are they that thirst and hunger after righteousness. Blessed are they. Do you know I tell people this? It takes men of encounters to work together. It takes people that have encounters to work with you when you are going through a tough time in your life. It takes people who have had encounters to be able to say, look, Peter had an encounter with Christ. And when he had that encounter, they asked him, who do people say that I am? He said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Now, I knew that that was not based on the teachings he's been giving them. It was an encounter. How? Because Jesus said, Peter, blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah. Simon bar means son of Jonah. So his, his son name is Jonah. It was Christ that gave him the name Peter. Are you hearing me? Peter was not Peter from the beginning. His name was Simon. Simon, Jonah. That sounds funny. Because Jonah is a sleeper. Simon, Jonah. Simon, Bar, Jonah. Like you have Bar Timius. Bar what? Timius. The name of that blind man is not Timius. It's not Bar Timius. Bar Timius is the son of Timius. Timius was a noble man in Jericho. That's why he's known. Simon, uh, Simon Bar Jonah. For flesh and blood. I had not revealed this unto you. But my father in heaven. May God reveal to you. Secrets. About your present situation that you don't have an idea of. That will strengthen your faith. And will strengthen your heart. And will make you shout your loudest amen now. It was an encounter that he had. That was why he knew what everybody did not know. Look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor... I know something you don't know. By encounters. 
It is encounters that makes you know what others don't know. By encounters with God. Based on what God has shown. But you have to thirst. Someone say, I'm thirsty. The Bible said in John 7 verse 37, on the great day of the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood up and said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and what? And drink. It takes thirst to drink from God. You have to thirst after it. You have to ask for it. Father, I need an encounter. This particular marriage I'm in, I need an encounter. This particular business I'm in, I need an encounter. I need you to show me something about this thing that I don't know. I am in the UK and things are not working well. I need an encounter. Because when I look at the policies of government and I look at the various things happening and the recent election that just taking place, I am baffled. I am overwhelmed. I don't understand. These banks are doubling their mortgage rates. The Bank of England is doing so much with the other so-called uh, interest rates. Lord, when will I prosper? It seems as if everything I have is being taxed. If I work for somebody, they tax me. If I work for myself, I out 35 is there. They tax me. How will I I survive pension will it be enough and i will it be enough lord god almighty show me and then let god take you to your future <laughs> somebody say my future you don't know tell anybody say my future you don't know an encounter you need to thirst for it isaiah 55 verse 1 it says, everyone, oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. When it comes to God, he takes thirst to draw something out of him. Habakkuk 2 verse 1, I will stand upon my watch. This is a statement of a thirsty man. I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Father, I need something much more beyond, beyond that which I have seen. I need to see something much more. Because this idea of just working on theory is not working for you. It's not working for you. When you work on what somebody said that they said that God said, that's theory. Amen? And the word became flesh. And we beheld. Someone said we beheld. That is encounter. We beheld. That's what, you, that's what happens when you have an encounter. When Peter, James, and John got to that mountain top, before that day, They've known Christ. But on that day, God showed them something about him that they don't know. To the point that when God showed them, they said, listen, sir, we don't need to go back downstairs. We'll live here forever. That's what the encounter does. Have you ever had an encounter that you wake up and say, that's so real? Have you ever had some kind of dream and say, ah, you mean I'm not inside that? You mean I'm not inside that Cadillac? Oh, my gosh. You mean I'm still in RM11? Oh, my gosh. Amen. <laughs> so real that you can touch it. That God just gave you an encounter. That encounter comes to strengthen your faith. Comes to strengthen your resolve. When I remember the things that God showed me about CCL's house of mercy. How God showed me. Then God went to different places and showed different people. The same thing. People I don't even talk to. One particular lady, I've never spoken to her in 15 years. She called me out of the blues. She said, sir, 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 sir. And described exactly the same thing that God showed me. I was scared. But at the same time, I was joyful. When God began to show even members of the church, when God began to show even people that don't even know us very well, when God began to show men of God, of timber and caliber, men who are like voices in the city, in the body of Christ, said, this is what God's going to do. I knew at that point that we are up for a target. The only thing the enemy attack is what God is doing. If he's the one doing it, doesn't need to attack it. That one is done. Everything came up against this vision. From the word go. Everything came. Everything came. No matter what we did. He was rumbled. It was problem. It was trouble. It was this. People left. It was almost as if, ah, what is happening? It was all over the place. But I kept going back to the encounter. He showed me. He showed me. Then I look at my life. What do I need to correct? And I correct it. And then, Lord, but Lord, you showed me. You showed me this. You showed me this. You showed me this. You showed me this. 
I will never forget this story I had about this great man of God, Bishop Oyedek, most of you know him. He was sharing with us in a minister's meeting. He was sharing this particular one. I had the other one, but he was sharing this particular one with us. And he said, when Zion had that ministry, almost about 10 years after, they were still sitting on benches. He said, somebody came to the church and saw the name of the ministry, Living Faith World Outreach. I went to call someone and they were laughing at the signboard. While he was preaching in this, uh, what is it called, shed, he said, and they saw them laughing. So the, the, an usher went out and said, ah, why are you laughing? He said, because <laughs> what outreach? Is this, is this outreach what? Is this, this thing? Ah, when that usher heard, that usher said, you know not what you know, what you are saying. So the usher went back inside after service and told the pastor. And when he told the pastor, that's bishop, he laughed. He said, yes, there's a time for them to laugh. But there's a time for God to laugh. So he said, today, who is laughing? He said, eight those people that laughed at us then appear today. He said, some of them may even be in the auditorium. He said, they may be there, but they can't talk now because they laughed at first. Be careful what God is doing in your friend's life or your brother's life stop laughing because you did not see what they saw and god said the vision is for an appointed time we have a way of saying ah, ah it should have happened this should have been you're a man there were moments and years when zachariah felt that elizabeth should have given birth because he was a pastor and he might have given a word to her, this year your fruitfulness <laughs> We shall all be fruitful. And everybody we shall. Ay, 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 amen. And then Elizabeth is still barren. At the end of the year. That's why when the angel came, he said, listen, there, there's no need. <laughs> Don't make us believe anything. We are, we are done. Amen. Because God tried to give him an encounter to even strengthen his faith. Amen. He refused that encounter. <laughs> may, you, may you not refuse your own encounter. <laughs> Amen. He refused what? That encounter. As if it's not going to work. It's not going to come to pass. We have believed on our lives. We've closed that chapter. We're just, just going through the emotion now. Let's just go the No, honey. I still believe. Look at number say, I still believe. It's difficult to believe seeing Christ on the cross. That's why they all left. So I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will what? Be scattered. All of them left. Thomas left. Matthew left. He came back to write the first book of the Synoptic Gospel, but he left that time. Left. Only John stood. Even Peter, who had encounters, was watching afar off. He told, he, he, he did not just leave, he denied Christ three times. Thank God for mercy. Someone say, Thank God for mercy. Look at nobody say, I'm thirsty. I didn't hear you say, I am thirsty. Amen. Psalm 63, verse 1 to 2, and I'll close. Oh God, thou art my God. Psalm 63, 1 to 2. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is. To see what? Thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen in thee, in the sanctuary. What you don't desire, you cannot possess. What you don't pursue, you are not permitted and entitled to possess. Matthew 7 verse 7, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Somebody will find an encounter this week. God responds to thirst. Please play that keyboard, I've got to close. God responds to what? Thirst. Look at neighbor. Say, neighbor, long for it. Can somebody shout very loud and say, I want an encounter. When a woman like Ruth follows a woman like Naomi, who has lost everything, she must be crazy. All she needed to do is go to her WhatsApp group 
and say, I'm following Naomi. And you will see the response of people on the group. People even quote scriptures. Ah, they say, you want to go where? Has the Lord gone ahead of you? But that woman followed because I believe she had an encounter. She must have seen something about Naomi that Opa did not see. I was saying at, the, at one of our midweek services, I said, be careful who you follow. Amen? Be careful who you what? You follow. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Be careful who you follow. There are people today who are divorcing, who are walking away from their marriages, who are doing evil to their spouses. And others see them and they want to follow them. I don't just say how that brother dealt with that sister, how that sister dealt with that brother. Come on. The Lord is my shepherd. I didn't come into this country to follow men. Upper left, but Ruth stayed. Ruth stayed because she had seen, I am more than a wife, or oh, sorry, a, 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 a daughter-in-law to this woman. Have you ever seen that you are more than a member in this church? You need to see that. I'm telling you, you need to see it. Or else you'll not be able to keep yourself. You will go with the Joneses. You need to be able to say to yourself, no? Mm -mm. You showed me that. So Ruth got to Bethlehem. She looked stupid. Encounters at times makes you look stupid. Why did you marry him? Out of everybody you could have married, is this uh, no official ambition, NFA, that you marry? Why? My father in the law, some of, some of the, when his wife married him, some of the people around him was telling the wife, why did you marry him? You are light, he's black. How can white lady, bright, you know, wonderful lady, beautiful, marry this short man devil? <laughs> wow. Said the Lord, gave me an encounter. Today, where are those friends? You see, friends are good, but they can be terrible. When they begin to lead you against your destiny, and that's when I've come to realize. That's when I've come to realize about life. Somebody was sharing me recently. He said some people were telling him to do something against someone. Because he said, ah, look at what he did. Do this, do this, do this. He said, but as he was even going to do it, he said, someone now sent him a message. He said, there's something some people are telling you to do. He said, don't do it. He said, don't do it. It's against your destiny. It's against your destiny. Ruth had an encounter. I look at what Ruth became. I look at who she became. We were only told that she gave birth to one child by the name Obed. But look at what Obed became. Jesse's father. Jesse became David's father. David became the great, great father, grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. A Gentile entered the lineage of Christ. A Gentile. That should not even be an Israelite because of an encounter. I'm praying that God will give you an encounter. Ananias will never ever come to Paul. Paul a dangerous man. Don't you hear what people are saying about Paul? That's why we tell people, don't believe what everybody says about somebody. Let God show you who they are to you. Because the devil will use what they say to push you away. Do you know how many of you wouldn't have married your husband if you listen to what somebody has said? They sat you down. Eh? Yeah, sit down. We are your committee of friends. We love you so much. This man you want to marry, don't you see his leg? It's not the same as the left. The left leg is longer than the other leg. And, this, and you two be like, ah, that's true. I didn't see it. Ah, don't you see his eyes? When one go right, the other one go left. He said, eh, really? Don't you see that he doesn't have fashion sense? He doesn't have fashion sense. Yellow upon purple. Purple upon bright green. Green upon olive. Olive upon tangerine. Don't you see him? Don't you look at him? We are just, we are just concerned friends. Oh. We are just concerned friends. Concerned. Thank you for being concerned. Amen. But God showed me. This is my husband. 
I have known people that have been talked out of their destiny just because things don't match. Can I say this to you? Never use a moment to judge a future. Never use what? A moment to judge what? The man walking on his leg without a car now can one day become owners of five. Never use a what? A moment to judge what? A future. Today I submit to you, as you thirst, may God give you an encounter. Stand on your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whenever you are, do me a favor, raise your right hand, and I'll pray this prayer for you, because I feel that you are thirsty for it. You are thirsty, so raise your right hand alone. Oh, sorry, put your right hand on your chest. Yeah, put it on your chest, where your heart is. Put it there. Father, I thank you for everyone who has listened to this message. Those of you online, do the same. Everyone who has listened to this message, I thank you. They needed to hear it, you know that. So, Lord, I pray for each one of them. If there's anyone here that desire an encounter, maybe for their job, that is looking as if it's not, not secure right now, or their family, or their marriages, that looks as if something is wrong right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Give them an encounter. That encounter will guarantee clarity. That encounter will strengthen their faith, will produce joy in them, and show them secrets that's not common to men. Thank you, Father. Because from today, we become people of encounters. In Jesus' mighty name. Put, your hand, put down your hands. Bow your heads where you are. Close your eyes. Keep standing. If you have listened to me right now, and you have not given your life to Christ, you can't have an encounter. You need an encounter, and you need to give your life to Christ first. If you want to do that, repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord God, I come to you today as a sinner to receive the forgiveness of my sins. The ones I know and the ones I can't remember. Wash me clean with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe with my heart that you raised him from the dead. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone who has prayed that prayer. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you. Take them on this journey of spiritual renewal and redemption. And let their soul be delivered from hell. In Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed that prayer wherever you are, find a full gospel Bible believing church where you can grow and be developed spiritually and be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ. If you are near us where we are, in London, here in Barking, listen very carefully. Join us at every Sunday, on every Sunday, on time of 10.30 a.m. in the morning, at 57 River Road, IG 11 Zero Delta Alpha, in Barking, United Kingdom. And as you come, your life will never remain the same. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Everyone here, give the Lord a big hand as you have your seats in his presence. You know, it takes a lot to follow God. But it takes an encounter to make it easy. Hallelujah.